Well, welcome to our fourth class on faith, uh, faith secrets. It's great to uh, be with everybody, everybody again. I hope that you had another faith-filled month and uh, you saw God at work in a, in a, in a great way, in a magnificent way uh, in, uh, in your life. I, I certainly remain incredibly grateful uh, for my wife and for my family and grateful to be alive, grateful to be here in Maui and with the uh, Maui church with, with everybody and uh, certainly grateful for my salvation and, and I'm very grateful for just the opportunity to, uh, to teach, teach these classes. And uh, I've got to say it was so incredibly wonderful uh, to see four people become Christians this, this last month. Uh, so happy for, for Kyle and for Corey and so happy for Jeremy and super happy for, uh, for Vanessa also. And uh, I also just wanted to say thank you to the board and to the search committee for uh, doing what, what I would consider an outstanding job in finding and transitioning us to, to our new leadership. Uh, so, so wonderful, so great to have uh, Kristen and, and uh, Stephen with us and uh, their, their, their family. And uh, I, I know they're going to do just uh, incredible things and move us, move us forward uh, in a godly way. And uh, certainly also want to just say a special uh, thanks uh, to Kent and Heather for uh, their awesome spiritual leadership here in the Maui Church and uh, the incredible impact that uh, they've made with their love and the hard work as, as uh, they, they've really made an eternal difference in the lives of so many people. And I know we're all grateful, and we're all thankful, but I just wanted to, to say that. And, also wanted to lift them up for their key work in overseeing and making happen the smooth transition uh, to our new evangelist and uh, new uh, woman's ministry leader. And I've got to say that I'm now really more ready than ever here in Hawaii. I've been given the, the New Testament of Hawaii pigeon. So I am, I'm, I'm ready to go with whatever. And I've tried, I've tried to look at this and I'm, 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 I'm struggling a bit, but I'm, I'm, I'm learning. Okay, there we go. So uh, if we could look at slide number one, uh, I just want to mention again, please, please be sure uh, to buy or borrow. Uh, and, then, and then it's always good then to read uh, the uh, Radical Faith book. Uh, we're only scratching the surface uh, of its contents and uh, within our five classes. And you can get it on Amazon. You can get it from Illumination Publishers at www.ipibooks.com. Uh, but uh, if, if you would, it would be great for you spiritually. So I would just encourage you to do that. And then looking at the, the next slide, uh, it just shows sort of what we've done and where we're going. But class one was on God's word and potential faith. And, you know, little word of God equals little faith potential. Uh, no word of God, no faith potential. Much word of God, much faith potential. And then our class two, we talked about a God kind of, God kind of faith. And uh, we talked about a God kind of faith. It, it works with uh, visualizing and then actualizing. And then uh, with, with class three, this last time with mission faith, we talked about speaking equals faith, but, but no speaking uh, equals no faith. And I, I hope we've had a great month of just sharing our faith and sharing our lives and sharing how awesome Jesus really is. And then uh, in, in the class today, we're going to talk about prayer, fasting, power, and, 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 and faith. And uh, next time we'll talk about financial faith. That'll be an interesting time. If we could look at the next slide then. Uh, so here we are in class four, prayer, fasting, uh, power and faith. And uh, here's, here's a great scripture to memorize and put on our hearts and put in our minds. It says, therefore I tell you, whatever you ask for, whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you've received it and it will, it will be yours. And uh, as always, let me just, let me just mention again, we, we never ever forget the, the big picture of Christianity. The big picture, obviously, it's always Jesus. Uh, he is the one that we're following and, and who we're becoming more and more and more like. And, and that, that makes an exciting life because it's the life that we were, uh, we were really uh, created for. Uh, he is the one that uh, it's, it's all about. Christianity is having an intimate relationship, a dynamic relationship with God. And uh, obviously, all relationships take commitment. Uh, they take trust. Uh, it takes communication to exist. And uh, really, this is what prayer is, uh, is all about. So first, we need to understand that uh, there is an eternal relationship uh, between prayer and, and faith. 
And so let's read together. Look at the next slide. Let's read together uh, Luke chapter 18, uh, verses 1 through 8. It says this. It says, Then Jesus told his disciples a parable to show them that they should always pray and not give up. He said, In a certain town there was a judge who neither feared God nor cared what people thought. And there was a, a widow in that town who kept coming to him with the plea, Grant me justice against my adversary. For some time he refused, but finally he said to himself, even though I don't fear God or, or care what people think, yet because this widow keeps bothering me, I will see that she gets justice so that she won't eventually come and attack me. And the Lord said, listen to what the unjust judge says. And will not God, of course, he's the just God, uh, a just judge, he says, and will not God bring about justice for his chosen ones? who cry out to him day and night. Will he keep putting them off? I tell you, he will see that they get justice and quickly. However, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? And so in this parable, Jesus teaches us that we are to pray and we're not to give up. That's obvious, that's, that's stated. Uh, we are to have a persistent kind of prayer. But after making this point in his story about persistent prayer, Jesus asked the question, when the Son of Man comes, will he find faith on the earth? And so with this connection made by Jesus, we now know that prayer and faith are eternally related, eternally connected in the mind of God. Prayer is a demonstration of our faith. Let's, let's go ahead and look at the next slide. A, a way that we can understand the relationship maybe more clearly is, is simply the following. Little prayer equals little faith. No prayer equals no faith. Much prayer equals much faith. Now, some people may want to protest and say, surely not, this, this can't be true, but it really, really is. Jesus teaches about prayer and then he asks the question, about faith and therefore the amount of prayer and the amount of faith are are linked the degree of prayer is a degree of our faith since prayer is a demonstration of our faith you know in Luke 18 verses 9 through 14 Jesus told another parable that that dealt with prayer and we can put up the next slide this time the the emphasis was was on humility and as we'll see, not all prayers move God. It is the prayer of humble faith that moves God. Let's read this together. To some who were competent of their own righteousness and looked down on everyone else, Jesus told this parable. Two men went up to the temple to pray, one a Pharisee, the other a tax collector. The Pharisee stood by himself and, and prayed, God, I thank you that I'm not like other people, robbers, evildoers, adulterers, or even like this tax collector. I fast twice a week and give a tenth of all I get. But the tax collector stood at a distance. He would not even look up to heaven, but beat his breast and said, God, have mercy on me, a sinner. I tell you that this man rather than the other went home justified before God. For all those who exalt themselves will be humbled, and all those who humble themselves will be exalted. Incredible story, incredible scripture. Although God heard the prayers of both men, only one man connected with God. Only one went home justified before God. And so, our hearts must be in a humble place for, for God to be moved by our prayers and in our prayers. Let's look at the next slide. Let's continue for a moment and look at Nehemiah's prayer uh, that we have recorded for us in, in Nehemiah 1, uh, verse 6, and then I'll skip down to verse 11. Let's, let's read this together. He says, let your ear be attentive and your eyes open to hear the prayer that your servant is praying before you day and night for your servants, the people of Israel. I confess the sins we Israelites, including myself, 
and my father's family have committed against you. Lord, let your ear be attentive to the prayer of, of your servant and, and to the prayer of your servants who delight in revering your name. Give your servant success today by granting him favor in the presence of, of this man. He was making a request in, 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 front, of, in front of the king. I was cupbearer to the king. Uh, the walls of Jerusalem were torn down. This was, was, was tearing up the heart of Nehemiah. He wanted to go back. He wanted to help. He wanted to rebuild. That's what this is all about. And yet we see in this prayer, Nehemiah has an obvious spirit of, of humility. And it's good to note that it took four months of humble prayer before God granted his request. It wasn't like overnight. It wasn't like right away. And then Nehemiah got more than he even imagined uh, God could do. But God moved the heart of the king to give him permission to go, but also access to materials to build whatever needed to be built. And even an escort on the 800 mile journey to get him safely to Jerusalem. I mean, God is an awesome God. And then throughout the book of Nehemiah, when you, when you read that or reread that, uh, we'll, we'll see that Nehemiah was an incredible man of prayer. And, and because of his, his humility, God was moved to, to answer his prayers. And so as we, as we talk of humility and, and, and talk of, of prayer, uh, we certainly can't forget the Gethsemane prayer with Jesus. Uh, Jesus prays that intense, broken capillaries in the face, bloody sweat prayer, asking if there could be any other way to save humanity. Uh, Jesus did not want to go through the pain and separation, um, and yet expressed, he expressed this, his will to the Father. But then he concluded that, that crying out to God prayer with the words, yet not my will, but yours be done. And so he prayed, but he was okay with a no answer. He was humble enough to submit himself to the Father's plans for him. What, what, what incredible trust, what, what, what faith demonstrated through this incredibly humble prayer of Jesus. Not my will be done, but yours be done. He, he was willing to do whatever God wanted him to do. And so with, with, with all of this in mind, uh, let's, let's look at a video uh, entitled The Stool. Jesus, I have decided to give you this. Really? Yeah. You know whoever sits here makes all the decisions, right? I know, and I'm always making decisions, but you make the perfect decisions, so you just sit right down and start making them. Wow, I'm honored. I mean... This feels great. Kathleen, guess what? I just got my new credit card. It's time to go shopping. Oh, really? I thought your husband and you were going to pay off debt. Oh, yeah. I mean, money's kind of tight, but I figured he doesn't have to know about it. So do you want to oh. go with me? No. <laughs> no? Why? Uh, what I mean is, uh, I don't know. Um, oh. So let me check my schedule, and then I'll get back to you. Okay, yeah, give me a call. Okay. <laughs> Kat, what's going on? What do you mean? Well, I'm kind of one cheek in it here. Look, I just want to make sure we're on the same page. You wanted me to sit here, right? Well, of course. And whoever sits here makes all the decisions? Right. So what's the problem? Uh, there's not a problem. I just, I don't know what I was thinking. Really, please, here, sit down. As long as you're sure. I'm sure. Okay, okay. so let's start over. Okay. All right. Kat, I noticed that you've been losing your temper a lot lately. Right. So, okay, Jesus, you know what? I know what you're going to say, but um, see, you, do? you don't know the whole situation, you know? Oh, I, well, all I'm saying is that your attitude is a decision. Yes, of course, but I have a lot going on right now. And well, I know you're under a lot of pressure. Pressure? Jesus, you don't understand pressure, okay? This I, isn't working, Kat. What? We can't both sit on the seat. It's either me or it's you. Okay, I know. You know, I just, I didn't think it was going to be this hard, but here, just take it. No, I'm not going to take it. You have to give it to me. Okay, here. Kathleen, make a choice. I can't. You just did. You know, what a, what a powerful video. Uh, it certainly makes us think about who's really sitting on, on, on the throne, the stool of, of our lives. It, it makes us consider who's, who's, who's really calling the shots for our lives. 
And, and so we, we, we've, we've got to be humble. We've got to be in submission uh, to God. And, and, and God, he really listens to people, to hearts like, like that. So now let's, let's remember that, 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 that prayer really, really is the answer here. Uh, Jesus was coming from the uh, Mount of Transfiguration with, with, with Peter, James, and John. And, and, and this, this, this is going to illustrate how, how, how awesome prayer is and how it moves God to do incredible things. And, and, and here we have the situation where the rest of the apostles were alone doing the work of the ministry. They were without Jesus. And uh, something to note here is that all the apostles had been given the power to heal uh, by God, by Jesus, in Matthew 10, verse, uh, verse 1. And, and now they find themselves failing in a particular case of healing. And eventually, they're going to ask the question of, why, why couldn't we heal the boy? So let's look at the next slide. And here's the story in Mark 9, verses 14 through to 29. And we're just going to read portions of this. You can go back and read all of it when you have time. Uh, let's go ahead. He says, when they came to the other uh, disciples, they saw a large crowd around them and the teachers of the law arguing with them. What are you arguing with them about? He asked. A man in the crowd answered, teacher, I brought you my son who is possessed by a spirit that has robbed him of speech. I asked your disciples to drive out the spirit, but they could not. You unbelieving generation, Jesus replied. How long shall I stay with you? How long shall I put up with you? Bring, bring the boy to me. And Jesus asked the boy's father, how long has he been like this? From childhood, he answered. If you can do anything, take pity on us and help us. If you can, said Jesus, everything is possible for one who believes. Immediately, the boy's father exclaimed, I, I do believe. Help me overcome my unbelief. Jesus rebuked the impure spirit. And Jesus took the boy by the hand and lifted him to his feet, and he stood up. And after Jesus had gone indoors, the disciples asked him privately, why? Why, why couldn't we drive it out? And he replied, this kind can come out only by prayer. And some translations say, by prayer and fasting. We'll talk about that a little bit later. So the boy had been brought to the disciples to be healed, but they had failed. The boy's father was, was very unhappy about this. And Jesus' response to all of this was that, that it was a faith problem. You unbelieving generation. And it was a long-term problem. And, 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 and often due to the longevity of a problem in a person's life, there's, there's greater doubt that exists that the problem can really be fixed and changed. And so the father said to Jesus, if, if you can do anything. And at this statement, Jesus, Jesus had a pretty strong reaction. He says, if I can. And the if obviously showed the, the lack of faith that was conceal, concealed in, in the heart of the father. And then Jesus goes on to say, everything is possible for one who believes. What a beautiful scripture. Everything is possible for the one who believes. And finally, the boy's father asked for help to have the kind of faith that is needed to help heal his son. And, uh, and, and did you catch what Jesus then said? Again, everything is possible for one who believes. It's, it's a faith issue. It's always, it's always a faith issue. Our faith makes the possibilities in our lives come alive. Now, 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 let's remember once again that the everything refers to whatever we've been promised by God that we're able to do. You know, we haven't been promised that we can jump a thousand feet in the air or to swim a mile in, 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 in 10 seconds. And uh, it was the apostles, not us, who were promised that they could heal and drive out demons. But whatever we have been promised, that's what is possible for us to do if we have the faith, if we, if we believe. The disciples were embarrassed that they couldn't do it. And, and so they waited when they were alone away from the crowds. And, and, and then they asked Jesus the big why question. Why, 
why couldn't we do it? And Jesus gave them the answer. It's only with prayer. Imagine these guys, the apostles, were doing the ministry and they forgot to pray. <laughs> it's amazing. Uh, and some manuscripts, like I said before, say it's a matter. It's a matter of, of, of prayer and, and fasting. So again, we see that, that, that faith and prayer go hand in hand in, in, in the mind, in the mind of God. And, and prayer then is an expression of our faith in God. It, it, it's, it's, it's faith becoming articulate. That's prayer, faith becoming articulate. And prayer is finally allowing God to have his will in our, own, in, in our lives on, on his terms. And our prayers are the keys to accomplishing God's, God's holy purposes here on earth. And, 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 and there's just no substitute for prayer. There's just nothing else, else like it. It's, it's, it's more than something we do. It's more than something we say. Prayer involves who we really, who we really are. And as I've mentioned, fasting. It's, it's fasting also. You know, prayer, prayer and fasting go together like, like peanut butter and jelly, like Romeo and Juliet. I mean, they were made for each other. So there are a number of passages that, that put prayer and fasting together. And, and one of these is, is, is Acts 14, uh, 23. And uh, it's, it's, it's when they were appointing elders and, 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 and they wanted to do the right thing and they wanted to have the power of God behind them to do great things in these churches. And it says, Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church and with prayer and fasting committed them to the Lord in whom they had put their trust. And, and so we see that, that prayer and fasting, are, are, they're linked together in the scriptures. And also, neither prayer nor fasting can, can, can really be left out of our Christian lives. And in the Sermon on the Mount, uh, Jesus talks about both prayer and, and fasting, and he introduces both subjects. Uh, you find this in Matthew 6, uh, verse 5, and Matthew 6, verse 16. He says, when you pray, he doesn't say if you pray. He says when you pray. That's the expectation. And then right below that, he says when you fast. He doesn't say if you fast. He says when you fast. And so there's obviously an expectation to have these regularly in our lives. You know, fasting means to abstain from food, but it also means giving up something good for something better. And we find from God's perspective, fasting is a form of mourning. It's also a God-approved means of, of humbling ourselves before Him. And so when we fast, you know, you're hungry, and it reminds us that we're petitioning God about something specific. It also expresses to God how serious we are uh, about whatever we're fasting about. And then in a, in a practical way, the time that we would have used in preparing and, and, and eating food can certainly now be used for prayer. So fasting is a plea to God to listen to our cries, to listen to what's in our hearts. Uh, and as it's coupled with prayer, it's a demonstration of faith with a big exclamation point uh, behind it. That's what fasting is. And so our faith should be expressed in prayer and at times in fasting too. Now, let's, let's, let's go a little bit deeper. Let's, let's dig a little bit deeper. Let's talk about a God kind of faith. And this will remind you a little bit of what we talked about a few months earlier versus a man kind of faith. So let's look at the next slide. And here in Mark chapter 11, verses 20 through 24, uh, is this really is crucial for our understanding and defining of prayer and faith. And I, I call this the prayer of faith. Let's, let's read this together. He says, in the morning, as they went along, they, they saw the fig tree withered from the roots. And Peter remembered and said to Jesus, Rabbi, look, the, the fig tree you cursed has withered. Have faith in God, Jesus answered. Truly, I tell you, if anyone see, uh, says to this mountain, go, throw yourself into the sea, and does not doubt in their heart, but believes that what they say will happen, it will be done for them. Therefore, I tell you, whatever you ask for in prayer, 
believe you have received it and it will be yours. This phrase, have faith in God. Uh, this statement aligns with the Romans passage that we discussed in, in Romans chapter four, verse 17, concerning having a God kind of faith. So let's look at, at, at Mark eleven twenty two 22 in the Young's literal translation and also in the Wycliffe Bible. It says this, it says, and Jesus answered, saith to them, have faith of God. And then also, and Jesus answered and said to them, have you the faith of God? Have the faith of God or have a God kind of faith. Jesus is teaching that to have mountain moving faith, a person must have a God kind of faith as opposed to a man kind of faith when it comes to prayer. And note that Jesus never literally moved a mountain in the sea. So what, what's the point here, Jesus? The point obviously is something huge, something big. It can be, it can be moved. And, and let's face it, we, we, we've all got some huge issues in our lives that, that come up at different times and different seasons of our lives, but huge issues in our lives that, that need to be moved. So what may seem impossible really is possible. In this case, huge, huge things. And you gotta ask yourself the question, is there a mountain that needs to be moved, that needs to be thrown out uh, in your life? There's a lot of mountains. Maybe it's Mount pornography. Maybe it's Mount unhappy marriage. Maybe it's Mount relationship conflict. Maybe it's Mount fruitlessness. Maybe it's Mount addiction. I, I don't know what the mountain might be in your life. But, but how, is, how is all this to happen? Jesus answers, it's, it's by prayer, but not just any kind of prayer, a God kind of faith prayer. And, and this is certainly opposed to a man kind of faith prayer. You know, man says, I believe it. I'll believe it when I see it. God says, believe it and you'll see it. Man says, show me and I'll believe. But God says, believe me and I will show you. And so Jesus tells us that for prayer to move a mountain, we must believe before we receive it. Whatever you ask for in prayer, believe that you have received it and it will be yours. And so we must have a God kind of faith, one that calls things that are not as though they were. Reminder of that. Uh, the reality of the answered prayer is already to exist for us as we, as we pray to God. All things are possible, but the limit to prayer is the limit of our faith. And so now we, 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 we've, we've seen a lot of things, but we've seen the direct relationship between prayer and faith. We, we now know that, that prayer is one of the greatest demonstrations of faith in God. And also we've seen that prayer is a, is, is, is a demonstration of our heart's humility. To, to pray is to show a God sufficiency. To not pray is to show a self sufficiency. A prayerless person is always a faithless person. And so prayer also determines how much of God's power is at our disposal. You know, as the persistent widow, we, we read about this a moment ago, was crying out, he was able to move the unjust judge to action. How much more would the persistent prayer, the crying out, be able to move the one just judge to action? You know, God's power gets unleashed and, and this awesome power then becomes at our disposal. I mean, that's, that's incredible. Now let's look, let's look at the passage in James chapter five and it's specifically talking about the prayer of faith. Let's look at the next slide. And we'll start in verse 13 and I'll take portions of the passage through verse 18. You can read the whole thing on your own. It, it says this, is anyone among you in trouble? Let him pray. The prayer offered in faith will make the sick person well. Pray for each other so that you may be healed. 
The prayer of a righteous person is powerful and effective. Elijah was a human being, even as we are. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three and a half years. Again, he prayed, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its crops. It's amazing. It says, the prayer offered in faith can heal. The prayer offered in faith can move mountains. What, 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 what awesome power. And it's all available to human beings. It says Elijah was a part of mankind, just, just like us. He was human, just, just like us. But what will inhibit God's power in our lives? It says it's our lack of righteousness. It's the prayer of a righteous person offered in faith that's powerful and effective. And so this is huge here. The character of the one who prays sets a limit on the answer that God chooses to give. That's huge. Now, now, now let's be clear. God will always answer prayer. God answers every single prayer. Prayed in faith, righteous person. But it's not always a yes answer. It, it may be a no answer, but that's God answering a prayer. It may be a not yet answer, but God answers every prayer. And know that God has, 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 has given freedom of choice to all humanity. Therefore, we may pray for another person for something specific, like maybe for them to become a, a Christian, for them to become a true disciple. But in the end, they do get to choose their own way, and certainly it makes a difference for us to pray for others as God has moved to specifically work in and around their lives. But God will not remove the freedom of choice from individuals. Additionally, when a prayer is offered in faith by a righteous person, God always gives the person what they need, not necessarily what they want. Listen to this carefully, please. The basic cry of our lives must be to God, use me totally to advance your cause. That's got to be the heart. Use me totally to advance your cause. And then God will answer all of our prayers of a person on the basis of that fundamental one. He will not allow the short-term prayer asking to make something happen now or give me something uh, to me now to get in the way of the long range, more important goal to advance the cause of Christ in the best way. So, so prayer is the greatest activity of humanity. It, it empowers us for change. It empowers us for service. It's prayer that gives us access to the unlimited power of God. You know, you got to plug in the phone, the iPhone, to power it up. You got to be plugged into the power source. Well, we've got to be plugged into God through prayer. He's the power source. A prayerless life is always a powerless life. Let's look at the next slide. You know, here's a prayer by Paul recorded for us in the Bible. It, it talks about the incredible power that we have available to us from God. It's in Ephesians it's, uh, chapter 3, verse 14, and then 20 through 21. It says this. He says, for this reason, I kneel before the Father. It's, he's in prayer. Now to him who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask, it's prayer, or imagine according to his power that's at work within us. To him be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus throughout all generations, forever and forever. This is for everybody for all time, all generations. And then he says, amen. So be it, it's what amen means, so be it. So, so have a genuine prayer, prayer life. To have that, you, you, you've, got to, you've got to have focus. You've got to have discipline. You know, Jesus got up early to be alone with God. We find that in Mark chapter 1, verse 35. 
Uh, he would spend the night, all night in prayer if he had this huge or big decision to make in his life. We find that in Luke chapter 6, verses 12 through 16. And of course, when he was in the Garden of Gethsemane, he, he, it took hours of agonizing in prayer to prepare himself to be totally ready to say, your will be done, not, not my will be done. And so again, focus and, and, and discipline. And as we're closing out here, let me just offer a few practicals here on how to pray. Uh, Jesus literally said in Matthew 6, verse 6, go into your closet and pray. You know, we need to have a quiet and a, a personal place for prayer. It's, it's, it's what we do in secret. And so it needs to be a place where we can concentrate, a place where we're, we're not disturbed. Those are important times, needful times. Different positions help to concentrate, to help us to concentrate and, 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 and maybe even maintain the right kind of attitude while we're in prayer. You know, obviously there's nothing wrong with sitting. But what about standing and remembering that we're in the presence of a king? What about kneeling? and remembering who we are and, and, and who God is. It's a humbling position. Maybe with outstretched arms, remembering that we're reaching out to our God. Or maybe walking and just remembering as we see the creation around us that we're talking to the creator of the universe. Also, another thing that's awesome to do is to pray through inspired prayers in the Bible. Uh, certainly, uh, it, it, it allows a person to pray for prolonged periods of time in a concentrated kind of way. Psalms, Psalms are great for this, but there's, there's, there's a lot of inspired prayers throughout the Bible. You know, it's where you read a line or two and, and, and whatever hits your heart with what's being said then, then you pray about it. And if you had come across a line that doesn't seem to fit, you just move on to the next line, but it really concentrates and focuses us to, 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 to consider and to pray to God as, as, as we have inspired prayers in the Bible. You know, in 1 Thessalonians 5.17, it says, pray continually. Wow, that's, that's heavy. It says, uh, we are to develop our minds and our spirits in such a way that as we go through our days, we have a prayerful attitude and an ongoing conversation with God. And so it would work sort of like this. Let's say you're in the middle of the office and, and there's a lot going on and uh, you, you need patience. Whatever's going on, you know you need patience. Well, right there in your own heart, in your own mind, pray for patience right at your desk or, or right in the conference room as something is going on. Uh, maybe when you know that you're, you're not being as loving to a person or not feeling that love and you're, you're talking to them, but in your heart and in your mind, you can, you can pray to God right there. God, help me to be more loving. Help me to love this person I'm talking to in a genuine and, and, and a deeper kind of way. Or, or maybe when we're nudged by the Spirit to share our faith and we're feeling a little fearful, just to pray right there, God, help me to be bold. Help, give, give me courage. Help me to be fearless right now uh, in this situation. Certainly, it's great to use the Lord's Prayer as, as, as a model prayer. There's some great books on that. Or to talk about, uh, you know, the, just the word acts, uh, where it, it stands for adoration. Start with prayer with adoration. Then it goes to confession. And then the T, you know, thanksgiving. And, and then finally, supplication, where you're praying for the needs of other people, but you're also praying for your own, your own needs. And, and, and then, you know, there, there's people that come up sometimes, whether it be in the fellowship or, or you're just, you know, in conversation or maybe even your family. And, 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 and they say, you know, well, would you pray for something, such and such for me? Well, it would be a great thing just to stop right there and say, let's have a prayer together right now. And obviously there's appropriate places and, and, and maybe some places that wouldn't be appropriate for that. But, but you can just stop and pray and have that prayer for that person with that person. Uh, right there. You know, my, my, my challenge, I want to give you a little challenge here. My challenge is for everyone to do something that's, that's big this month. Do something that's, that's memorable. Do something that's out of the box for yourself uh, when it comes to, to prayer. You know, the Bible says that Abraham was a friend, a friend of God. Uh, and, and so it, it's building our friendship by making memories together. How do I feel about a person? 
well, I feel about a person depending on the memories I've made with that person. Well, what memories have we made with God? Because that's how we're ultimately going to feel uh, about him and our closeness, our closeness with him. You know, one time I did a prayer walk uh, by walking around the, the, the Boulevard Peripherique, uh, which is the 21 mile uh, long highway that encircles the city limits of, of, of Paris. Uh, that was an awesome time. It was a memorable time. It was, it was, it was an incredible nonstop seven hours of walking and, uh, and, and praying. Uh, you know, going to special places and, uh, and, and praying. Uh, you know, I've had certain opportunities that, that probably some other people haven't had, but, you know, having a prayer at the Colosseum in Rome and knowing right, right there is where uh, brothers and sisters in Christ were, were, were killed for and murdered for their faith. Or, you know, standing at the, at the place of the Areopagus uh, there in, in Athens and knowing that, 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 that Paul was, was right, right here and having a prayer in, in those places. And I've been able to have prayer in Tokyo Tower and prayer at the Eiffel Tower there in Paris and prayer at the, in Red Square. In, 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 in Moscow and in Hero Square in, in Budapest and in a lot of other places, but having special times and special places and making special memories uh, with, with our God. You know, a few weeks ago with, with Dan, uh, Kay and I uh, went up to the top of Haleakala. And, uh, you know, we were, we were able to, it wasn't a long prayer, but just to be able to pray together up there was a special memory. Uh, you know, I've, 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 I've done two 30-day fast, uh, where I drank water and, and juices, but, but didn't eat any solid foods. And uh, this, just a little tip here, learn this the hard way. You do not break a long fast with pepperoni pizza. <laughs> that is not a good thing to do. But that, those were great times. You know, on most weeks, I, I fast from, from, from Wednesday night to Thursday night. And, and, and honestly, I've only done that for, uh, for uh, you know, maybe a year or two. And I got thinking that in my life, my, my, my Christian life, I, I really hadn't had a, a, a practice of this. There were times, but there hadn't a practice. So I put that, you know, in my life. So you got to ask yourself the question, what would be big for you? You know, how, how do you want to build your friendship, make memories uh, with God, communicate with God? Uh, maybe it's a fast. Maybe it's a one-day fast or a two-day fast or a three-day fast. That would be something new for you. Maybe it's a whole day that you set aside just to walk and be with God, uh, reading the scriptures and praying. Uh, maybe it's a one mile, two mile, three mile, four mile, five mile, I don't know, walk, where you're just walking and, and, and praying with God out there, just beautiful creation in Maui. Uh, but whatever it is, when, when you go big, you'll always remember it, and, and, and God will remember it too. So let's close out recapping what we've talked about if we look at the next slide and you see that there is an eternal relationship between prayer and faith and we understand that prayer is a demonstration of our faith so little prayer and fasting equal little faith equal little power no prayer and fasting equal no faith which equals no power much prayer and fasting equals much faith, which equals much, much power. So I, I just want to say, I hope everybody has a, a, a great, great November. And although it's a little early, just want to say happy Thanksgiving to everybody. Hope you have a great time with friends and, and family and make some memories there. And just also just wanted to say that next week when we have our D groups, I hope that'll be a special time, an open time, a real time, an honest time. And, and, a, and a great time of prayer uh, with your brothers and sisters. Love you much. Take care.